9,997, 9,998, 9,999, 10,000. Okay, now that's just a warm-up. Let's talk about fitness and professional bass fishing. Okay, let me let me bring you over here. Right there. Okay. Get that out of the way. Fitness and professional bass fishing, how important is it? Okay. It's important. All right. It may not be important to the weekend angler. It may not be important to your everyday uh, fisherman. I mean, a guy that just drives his boat out to Middle Lake, throws on an anchor, throws out a minnow on a bobber, fitness really isn't that big a deal, okay? To the professional angler, however, it matters. Now, it doesn't matter. It, 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 your fitness is never going to trump your knowledge and your experience of fishing. For example, some competitor can go out on the lake during tournament day, stumble into a wad of big fish, and win the tournament, regardless of what shape they're in, okay? But the fitness does play into an effect to a, to a certain degree. It's, it does not ever trump your knowledge and experience of, of the fishing, of the patterns, and that sort of thing. But it enhances it enhances who you are as a fisherman. Makes you keener, sharper, uh, just uh, just more well-rounded, okay? It's not, I mean, if you look at some of the professional anglers out there, I mean, obviously, you can get by without it, okay? And do quite well. But also, if you look at, if you look at the, at the physiques of the field as a whole, of the top level guys, I mean, most of the guys are fairly, yeah, I want you know, they're not necessarily in shape, but their, their body weight to height is proportionate. Okay. So anyways, but for me, I've always incorporated fitness into my plan, into my fishing. And, uh, and I do believe it is an advantage to do so. And here are just some of the things I want to highlight as to why fitness is important to the professional angler. First of all, let's talk about career longevity, all right? Um, what I've noticed over the years is once pro anglers get to be about 60, somewhere around 60 is when they start declining. The really good ones... Even they start declining. However, I, their consistency declines. However, uh, those superstar elderly anglers, they still have a capacity to just win, but their consistency isn't quite the same. Just for example, uh, look at Rick Lund's win a couple years ago. Okay, uh, where was that? St. John's River. I mean... Obviously, he's not as consistent as he used to be, but the Duke can still win one. Uh, back when, um, uh, I don't know, this must have been about 10 years ago or so, Guido Hibbins getting in the latter part of his career. Boom, he gets on a pattern, gets on the fish, wins one on Lake Eufaula. So the, the superstars can still manage that uh, age, but the consistency just isn't there. <clears throat> so where the fitness comes into play, is by maintaining a fit, uh, a, a certain level of fitness throughout your career, I believe, and, and maintaining, especially as you get into the older years, just really, you know, making sure you work on it, make, making sure you have the leg strength, the, uh, the, the muscles, the, the, the muscles in your core are properly strong enough to just maintain everything so you're not injured all the time. So I think the fitness is going to help that, with that career longevity. So instead of maybe falling off at 60, maybe a guy can extend that, extend that a little bit. And uh, that's what I'm hoping anyways, because 60 is, 
I don't even want to talk about 60. I certainly don't feel 60, but uh, it's there. <laughs> it's there on the horizon anyways. So the career longevity, very important for a pro angler. The longer you can be, the longer that you can still be competitive, the better off you're going to be. I mean, pretty common sense. All right, now, fitness also comes into play with your daily, daily stamina and endurance, okay? Um, boy, the toll, the energy drain that a full day of bass fishing where you're standing on the deck, uh, working hard at it, working on your patterns, bending down to get rods constantly all day long, up and down off the trolling motor, up and down off your big motor. Um, to, to the average person, it's like a big deal. But those of us that fish all day, we know the energy drain that, that we go through. And that energy drain is best defeated or combated by a fitness program. And now when I say fitness, I should have mentioned this a minute ago, but I'm talking about, I mean, what is the ideal fitness for a pro angler? You know, you, you don't, I'm not, you don't have to be muscle bound, okay? I think you just need to be height, weight, proportional, basically kind of a lean, lean and mean, okay? You want to be toned, you want to be strong in your joints, in your back muscles, core muscles, leg muscles. You want to be strong there, but you don't have to be muscle bound, okay? And you want to uh, get lean and mean. You don't want to be carrying a lot of extra body weight in the form of body fat. Because just imagine standing on the front of your deck all day if you have, uh, if you have like an extra, you know, two pounds, you know, two 20 pound sacks of flour around your waist. Okay, that's going to drain you a lot faster as compared to without having those extra two bags of 20 pound bags of flour. If you know what I mean? And then just to give you an example, with my own fitness, um, last year at this time, so this would have been 2021, the first tournament was Okeechobee in January or early February. And I was probably at about the heaviest weight I'd ever been. And getting through that eight hours, you know, in January, February, we have our shortest daylight. Getting through that eight hours was, I never, it had never been so difficult for me to get that sundown to sunset to fishing in. Plus, Lake Okeechobee is a stand-up tournament, meaning I'm going to be pitching, flipping, I'm standing, I, I can't be sitting down and fishing, so I'm standing on my feet all day with all this extra weight that I'm normally not used to. And I never, ever felt so drained. My back was super sore by the end of the day. And, uh, I mean, that just, that was like, I mean, I knew that was, I knew I was going to be in trouble going into that uh, practice and tournament because of that. And sure enough, it, 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 it was a reality. So, and really there is such a thing as called fishing shape because the first tournament of every year, I always have the most difficult time with practice and with just, you know, muscles in my back. I just get kind of sore and I'm just more fatigued than normal. But as I progress, you know, as I fish through the first week, you know, the first few practice days and then into the tournament days, I mean, I'm, I, there's a progression of improvement with each day. And then if I happen to go to another tournament the next week, without much time in between there. Well, then I'm really, by the end of that second week, man, I'm, you know, I'm like a little uh, jitterbug up there on the front of the boat, man, I'm, I'm hopping. So that, and, and here's another thing about the stamina and the energy drain. They've actually have done uh, um, experiments on pro anglers. And I read this a while ago, and I, I think John Cruz, um, uh, I think he was involved in this. Um, and it's a couple other guys, but they actually monitored their calorie uh, burned for a whole tournament day. And it was some ungodly number that you would never imagine. Never, I mean, you wouldn't even, it was unbelievable. It was as though, it was, although it, it was as though they had just ran like one or at least one, maybe two marathons. It was some ridiculous statement like that, that they compared it to. And which... I mean, honestly, it's, I mean, I usually lose weight through the course of a tournament week. 
because I'm out there. I mean, it's just, I know I'm burning energy. So if you can, as you condition, as you work out and you know, I, I do, I do my fitness routines of, I do some cardio, I do some running, I do some lifting, you know, all that is in prep, you know, preparing my body, getting used to my body, recovering rapidly from, uh, from exercise or from usage. Daily stamina, that act, the, being fit, being lean and mean and strong is gonna get you from one day to the next and you'll be able to recover each day, be ready to go the next morning. The last thing you wanna be is at the end of the day, you're so damn tired, you look down at a fishing rod and you're telling yourself, gosh, I really should pick up that fishing rod with that buzz bait on there and set this jig rod down. But you're so tired just to do that motion, you're like, I'll just keep fishing this jig. I don't know if any of you have ever been to that point of tiredness and just fatigued. Um, I try to push through that, but I know I have caught myself saying, Jim, you're, you're so tired right now, you're not even uh, doing what you should be doing. So being fit, being lean and mean is going to help you be a better angler all through the day, all through a practice day, all through a tournament day. You're just going to be able to focus on the fishing and not worry about the aches, the pains, and all that that's going on. Three, okay, the other thing here, agility and balance. Being fit is going to help with your agility and balance, okay? We don't, we don't have to be gymnasts out there, okay? But, you know, when you hook that fish up by the trolling motor and you reel him up and all of a sudden, you, you know, you got a big fish and then he runs back towards the back of the boat and you got to chase him back to the back of the boat, step over a couple rods on your way there, down the, you know, down to the bottom of the deck, back up to, to the rear deck. And then you finally go to bend over and grab him and all of a sudden he runs up to the trolling motor again and your trolling motor's on spot lock, the prop's spinning. You're like, oh crap, but my, my lines, the bass is going to get into the spinning prop. So you run back up there. I mean... That's just one example. Another example is when you are rigging, your, boat's, your boat is on the trailer, you're at your campsite, you're at your cabin, you're at your hotel room. How many times do you get in and out of that boat as you're rigging? For me, I mean, I should, what I should do is set, set up a time lapse of me spending a day rigging. Because I'm, I'm in and out of that boat, in and out of that boat, out of the boat, into the camper, out of the camper, into the boat out of the boat, into the camper, just constantly doing that. And it's just, it's just easier if you're fit. It's easier to do that. So, and, and it's less fatiguing. It's less, you just, it's, it's just, it's easier. So just that whole, and then just the balance. Okay. When you're on your trolling motor in, in waves, if you have better leg strength, better balance, and you're fit, you're going to do a better job on that trolling motor in waves, okay? That's that's just the way it's going to be. So it's it's these are little things, but they they they're they're little things that add up to mean something, okay? So and I'm sure there's other examples of agility and a balance. Like I said, you, you know, you don't have to be able to dunk from the free throw line, but um, or you don't need to be able to do cartwheels on a balance beam, but, uh, you know, just being more fit, more lean and mean, you're going to be able to move about the boat with better efficiency, using less energy, and it's going to be beneficial in some way. All right, four, number four here is be fit is going to prevent injuries by doing exercises. Uh, you're going to strengthen your, strengthen your joints, you strengthen... Uh, you know, where do, where do we get our injuries, fishermen? Well, oftentimes they're in our wrists, elbows, and shoulders. That's, pro that's very common. So by maintaining a regular exercise program and fitness program where you address these muscle groups and these joints and their motion, um, you're going to do a better job at preventing the injuries that, that we can get. And even though I even though I do try to maintain my fitness, I, I still sometimes will, like let's say I haven't been on a jerkbait pattern for a, a few weeks, and all of a sudden I go out there and fish a, a jerkbait pretty aggressively. Yeah, my wrist is going to be 
something weird. It's going to be feeling weird by the end of the day. So, but it recovers, all right? It's got a fast recovery. So, and back. what about our back injuries, okay? Or our back issues. Being fit by having strong core muscles, you're going to have a less chance of hurting your back as you're, you know, as you're hopping waves across, uh, you know, Lake Erie in, in big waves. You know, you know how that is. We have jarring boat rides at times. And all that jarring is, I mean, I got a Ranger boat. They've got an awesome seat with a lot of cushioning, but it doesn't matter how co much cushioning you have. You have, you're going to have that jarring on your spine and back. And I'll never forget one time, this was uh, several years ago. I remember just in practice, I was running all over Lake Erie in some pr pretty good waves. And after two days of that, of, of practicing, I, I'll never forget how I had core, I had abdominal muscles and back muscles just, I mean, they had the lactic acid burn going because I, I, I had never used them much. And it was just from all that just, just crashing around out there. So... By having a strong core, strong core muscles, you're, I think you're going to have a better chance at preventing those back injuries. And if you're lean and mean, you're not carrying all that extra weight that adds to the jarring. If you're at, a, at the right body weight proportion, uh, you're, not gonna have, you're just not going to have all that excess fat just bouncing, just pulling down on your, on your torso with every boat wave. So... I'm sure there's some other injuries I'm not thinking of and other ways that fitness helps in that category. But on to the next one, number five. Okay, I wrote resets the mind. Okay. A lot of times I'll go I'll, after day one of the tournament or day two, many times I will actually go through a workout. Okay. I might be exhausted at the beginning of it from fishing all, from, from the tournament action that day. But my mind, I usually have a lot of emotion one way or another going on when I finish a tournament day. If I had a good day, I might be feeling really giddy and happy. and Or if I had a bad day, I'll be just depressed and pissed and frustrated. So by going through a workout, after, when I get back to my camper... And I actually push myself a little bit. Pretty soon my brain is more concerned about pushing through the program, the exercises that I'm doing. And it takes my mind off of the whatever emotions I experienced from the day's uh, action. And then by the time I'm done with my workout, I'm so exhausted. I just want to grab something to eat, think about things, and then just go about my business. I, I've... I've returned back to kind of a normal state after that workout. So that's one thing that it does for me. So anyways, uh, you know, fitness can matter to a pro angler. Um, not every, not all the anglers are into it. Some are, some aren't. But there are benefits, and these are the benefits that I see. And I hope to, ben I hope to this career longevity... That's the one that's really, uh, well, they're all important, but that's probably number one. That's probably number two. And, uh, and these other things are also important, but, you know, just being able to push, being, being able to be alert at the end of the day rather than just dog tired, that's a thing. That's, that's something. That's, that is something. Okay. Anyways, that's it with the fitness. And, uh, yeah, those, those push-ups I was doing down there on the floor at the beginning, yeah, I, I can't do 10,000 push-ups. So, sorry to disappoint y'all. Over.